With this session update, I'm Shannon Lurkey. On a 34-33 party line vote, the Senate passed the 100 percent by 2040 renewable energy bill, which would set the goal of 100 percent carbon-free electricity generation by the year 2040. Here are some highlights from the debate. The potential for the blackouts is real. We've heard it from MISO. We've heard it from our utilities. Here are some of the things to consider for our farmers. When their fans go off in their animal barns, will they be subject to animal welfare violations? Will they ha have access to deprivation funds for the loss of those animals if that happens? What about farmland use? I'm going to get to some numbers that we have to think about here. The amount of land that we will have to use in order to get to what we're talking about. How much prime farmland are we going to lose in order to do that? But yet we still are expected to feed millions and millions of people. What about local control? That's not in this bill. That's something we talked about in committee. There are some counties in this state that have a lot of solar already. And their local county boards would like to put some type of controls in place. We see that all the time through ordinances. How are we going to develop? Here's where we want an industrial park. Here's where we want residential. But we're taking that away from them if we have a 50 megawatt or larger solar array going in. That's up to the PUC. It takes 5,000 solar panels to produce one megawatt of power, according to its nameplate. It takes about 10 acres of land for those 5,000 solar panels. So if we were to believe we could use solar to meet that demand, which the average, I'll, the number I have on my paper here, the average typical use is 78,700 megawatts. We're a little higher than that right now. But that would require 787,000 acres for solar panels, Mr. President. That's 160 square miles. The thing to remember, though, is solar panels don't produce electricity 24-7. Right now, we couldn't even begin to meet that demand because they'd be producing nothing right now. So maybe we could use wind turbines instead. Wind turbine produces about 2.7 megawatts of power. So again, with that 78,000 plus megawatts usage, that would take over 31,000 wind generators. Mr. President, do you know how many wind generators we currently have in Minnesota? It's approximately 2,400. 2,400. We would need 31,000. Members, young people are watching us. Whenever I go to, our, to the schools in my district, they drill me. They say, this is about my future. What are you doing about it? Why haven't you taken any action on this matter? This is my future, and you are responsible. And they hold me to account every single time. Members, we've seen thousands upon thousands of young people rallying in this Capitol on the steps, completely filling the lawn. They are watching us. They expect us to act. Tonight we have that opportunity. Paradoxically, the great challenge of climate is also a great opportunity to unleash innovation, new businesses, new jobs, an opportunity to not explore full, export fully 10% of our state's GDP, which we do now. 
We have no fossil fuels in this state. Billions of dollars that we export from this state every year. We can keep those dollars here and create wealth and prosperity and jobs and opportunity for Minnesotans. This bill that the majority is poised to pass is not even the best opportunity we had today for the most amount of clean energy coming to Minnesota. That was the Republican plan to open the door and allow for all forms of clean energy, not the limited pre-approved methods in the blackout bill. But that got rejected on party line votes. This blackout bill is not even the most, the bill with the most affordability for Minnesotans that we voted on today. That was the Republican plan that we brought forward. And the majority decided to vote no. This blackout bill is not even the best for reliability that we had before us today. Because that was the Republican plan, showing if we get as many forms of baseload, solid, reliable energy of all the forms out there in Minnesota, we will have the best chance at having a strong, reliable grid, particularly in the times when the energy demand is at its highest on the coldest winter nights or the hottest summer days. But the majority voted no. And so we're left with this inferior product, the blackout bill that is sorely lacking in affordability, is sorely lacking in reliability, and leaves much to be desired for bringing as many clean energy technologies to Minnesota as possible. First of all, I'm persuaded that I'm more confident than ever that we should bet on Minnesota to do our part on climate change. I'm more confident than ever that we can do it, that we can meet that challenge. And I want you to know, members of the minority, it's evident that you don't like the bill, and I, I hear you. I'm not incapable of understanding what you're saying. I'm just guessing that in five years and 10 years and 15 years, the people of Minnesota will be glad that we passed it, which we are preparing to do. And you have my commitment to continue working on the issues of climate and environment along with everyone else to try to address what's really going on here, which is that we have not dealt with climate change effectively as a state and as a country and as a planet, frankly. And the things that they told us were going to happen 30 years ago are happening right now. And the cost to be discussed here is the cost that we're already paying. The cost in terms of the damage to property and person, the cost in terms of the anxiety that we're creating in younger Minnesotans asking, what are you going to do about it? and the cost that we don't yet know if we don't take action. First of all, the process. This bill was introduced four years ago. Again, two years ago, it received not a whisper of attention in the Senate from the majority party. I could not get a hearing. I asked, climate change is obviously an issue. Why in the world will we not allow it to come before the committee and at least hear what the people want to say? Mr. President, the answer was, we don't feel like hearing it right now. Well, let me tell you, the people in this country and the people on this planet are getting a little tired of we don't want to do anything. And while I like and respect each member of the minority caucus, and you know I do, I didn't really hear very much from all of you about how we're going to tackle climate change and make big, big changes and reduce carbon. Did you know that the energy sector in Minnesota puts out 21.9 million tons of carbon every year? We could really use your help on addressing ways to reduce that. And the people of Minnesota want us to take those steps. This year, due to whatever reason the voters wanted to put Democrats in charge, got a chance to have a hearing. We had the hearing. And immediately, stakeholders, including those utilities on whom we are asking to meet these goals, engaged fully and with an uh, open mind and a full heart and we made significant changes to the bill, primarily on behalf of our co-ops and our municipal electric companies. Those changes included the partial credit, 
the ability to use the peaking power plants at their discretion, the ability to use renewable energy credits to meet their goals, a 17-year window to make it. And then the big one, when they finally said, look, we're going to be okay with this, we just need a break on 2030, we took from 80% to 60% the standard. We have two choices. We can sit in the chamber and say, well, we can't do it. No, we just can't make it. This is too tough. It's not going to work. Or we can rise to the challenge like this country and this state did, two world wars, Great Depression, and who knows what challenge in the future, and we can meet it. And when people in your district, no matter how rural your district might be, ask you, what did you do about climate change, whether you vote for this bill or not, you'll be able to say, I was a member of the Minnesota Senate, and we passed the 100% clean energy by 2440 bill, and that's what we did. Thank you, Mr. President. There being 34 yeas and 34 noes, the bill passes and the title is agreed to. To continue following these issues and more, watch legislative coverage Monday through Friday on the PBS Minnesota channel or visit www.senate.mn and www.house.mn.